So what is the best kind of content for real estate agents to post to Instagram? Stay tuned because I'm going to share the four kinds of content that you should be sharing to the app to generate leads and close some deals. And if you stay with me till the end of this video, I'll share my free resources on building an Instagram presence that generates leads on demand. Stay tuned. If we haven't met yet, I'm Stephanie Lugo, award-winning realtor in Arizona, and welcome to Tip Tuesday, where I share tips on growing your real estate business. If you're into that kind of thing, be sure to hit subscribe below and stay in the loop with the latest what's working now strategies with real estate marketing on social media. And just a reminder, you can hop down to the show notes below this video anytime to check out links to resources mentioned, ways to connect with me and more. Now, social media marketing is kind of my thing. And in my last video, which I will link up here, the types of lead generation on social media, I mentioned how my husband Bryce and I built our six figure real estate business within 12 months using social media. Four years later, we've generated well over six figures on Instagram alone and become the established authority in real estate in our market. I've been able to teach thousands of real estate agents across the country how to grow their real estate business on Instagram. And today for Tip Tuesday, I wanna share the different types of content you can post to Instagram, my favorites, and why they are the best. You might be wondering why this matters. Well, number one, there are a lot of people on Instagram, over a billion monthly users, in fact. Instagram is the second most trafficked platform behind only, you guessed it, Facebook, who purchased Instagram 18 months after it launched in 2012. So yeah, it's an important place to show up and if you want to find any success on social media, you gotta be there. It's a great place to stay top of mind and connect with potential buyers and sellers in your market multiple times a day. Now for a free app, there's really quite a lot that you can do with Instagram. They give you a bunch of features that you can utilize, but in my opinion, not all are equally as impactful. So I'm going to share the four content types in order of my favorites. And the first content type we have is posts in the feed. Posting to the feed is the original type of content on Instagram. Before they unrolled all kinds of new features, it was just a photo app to share image posts. Therefore, if you do nothing else on Instagram, you've got to be sharing posts to your feed. This is a photo or a video up to 60 seconds long that you can post to kind of a gallery attached to your username. They stay there forever unless you choose to hide it or delete it from your feed altogether. These posts are what somebody will see when they go to your profile and choose to follow you. So you need to make sure that this is good, thoughtful, intentional content. I share a lot about how to make better posts in my free guide, which is linked down below. So you can grab that there, but for now, just keep going. For posts in the feed, they can be either. You can just put your post up on your feed and be done with it. Or if it's a really good piece of content that you think that you can generate leads with, you could pay to promote it to be seen by a larger audience. For the ease of creating this content and the importance of it, the significance of having posts in your feed, I definitely place this in the number one most important kind of content to produce on Instagram. And you should be showing up there with at least one post four to seven days a week. That's right, I post seven days a week, but you know, four or five, you're doing good. Now, number two are stories. So stories are absolutely number two on my list of the most important types of content that you can post. Stories are 15 second video clips or 10 second photo clips that are posted to a separate feed and they disappear within 24 hours. So now you might be thinking, what? They disappear within a day? Why are they important then? Here's why. Stories is where you fit anything that doesn't belong in your feed. That means the behind the scenes, day in the life, vlog type of content. Because stories are fun sized and don't stay up for long, you can do these on the fly. There is really no production requirements here because you can shoot photos and video for stories right within the app and edit them there too. I also love stories because you can do a bunch of cool things with them by adding stickers. Stickers are little functions that allow you to add a GIF, tag your location, very important, add hashtags, and most importantly, you can create polls, quizzes, or invite questions right into your stories. 
and I'm not the only one obsessed with stories. Studies show that users on the app consume stories way more than feed posts. This is also true for Facebook, by the way. They have a stories feature too that does really well. Now, you cannot promote stories posts, but you can create stories ads. By paying for a story ad, you get a feature called Swipe Up, the highly coveted Swipe Up, which basically creates a link in the ad to wherever you want to send prospects if they choose to swipe up on it. Story ads are incredibly effective and actually not very expensive, so it's really worth looking into if you've got something good to share. Stories get far more views and engagement from posts in the feed, and with how easy they are to create, stories come in a very close second on my list. You should be showing up in your stories every single day to interact with your Instagram followers and to build engagement in your community. Now, number three on my list is Instagram Live. In 2019, the social media networks are making it pretty clear to us that video is where the ship is headed. Facebook unveiled its live feature years ago and Instagram wasn't far behind. Instagram Live can be done right within the app and it's exactly what it sounds like a live broadcast featuring probably you. When you go into Instagram Live, it gives you a three, two, one countdown and then connects to the live stream. Then it will notify your Instagram followers that you're live and they can view the live broadcast as long as you're on. Then they can see it for 24 hours after you end your recording. They can also leave comments or ask questions, making this a really engaging way to interact with your audience. Now, it's not hard to get Instagram Live set up and going, but you should have an idea for what you're trying to accomplish on Instagram Live. Users tuning in will expect to be educated, motivated, or inspired. So you'll need to spend some time before the broadcast putting together some good content to share. This is number three on my list, not because it's the most valuable. I mean, it is. You can do a lot of great things for your Instagram account by using Instagram Lives but because most agents are afraid to go live. Scratch that. Most people on social media just don't love the idea of hopping on face to camera and sharing something on the fly. So unless you believe that you can do this at least, you know, twice a week, I don't know that Instagram Live is where you'll want to put all of your time and attention into. Your time might be better spent with stories and feed posts. And last but not least, it's IGTV. IGTV or Instagram TV is a relatively new feature to the app and it is long form, vertically formatted video. This also has its own separate feed called a channel. And again, it's kind of works just like you'd expect. IGTV videos can be between 15 seconds up to 60 minutes long. Think of it like a YouTube channel. Now, when IGTV came out, it was big. Like I was super pumped thinking, this is it. This is the next wave of digital content. But it didn't quite take off like I expected it to. And one of the problems that I see with IGTV is that when it first came out, there weren't a lot of mainstream mobile apps to help with editing and formatting these videos with ease. This mattered because users watching IGTV a lot of times expected to see more polished production style videos like YouTube. It also takes time to format that content in a different way from the rest of the content users share to Instagram. So just for that reason, the fact that it takes a lot more time and effort to get them produced and the relatively lower consumption rates, I put IGTV fourth on my list. So there you have it. In the order of importance, I rank types of content as posts in the feed first, then stories, Instagram Live is third, IGTV is fourth. At the end of the day, this is what I tell to agents. We aren't digital marketers. We can spend a lot of time and effort getting to use all the different features that these platforms provide, but you have to know yourself and your business and your audience who should be potential buyers and sellers, and then decide what the most important types of content are to post. For me, that is a post to the feed every day and stories seven to 10 times a day. Sounds like a lot, but I plan out this content once a week and I'm very intentional with my strategy. And the time is well worth it because every week I am lucky to talk to leads that come right into my direct messages inquiring to buy or sell with us and it's wonderful. I'd love for you to try this out and start seeing results. And if you want to take those successes even further, be sure to download my Instagram guide for real estate agents. I have it linked down below. 
along with some other resources, or you can go directly to www.instagrowthforrealestate.com slash blueprint. It's totally free and it can definitely help you start to grow on Instagram as it has helped thousands of other real estate agents across the country. All right, now time for the question of the day. What kind of content do you prefer on Instagram? What has been working well for you? Tell me in the comments. I want to hear all about it. And I love jumping into the comment section to support you and help you through the process. And hey, if you loved this video, be sure to hit subscribe to stay in the loop because next Tip Tuesday is going to be about how to actually post this content in a way to generate leads. So if you want to know the simple steps to generating leads on Instagram, hit subscribe. And as always, thank you so very much for tuning in. Until next time, keep on crushing it.